Today we're going to discuss the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled Roadmap and we're also going to discuss Pokemon Sword and Shield as the developer said that cut Pokemon will return. We're also going to discuss Deltarune as that has its own vinyl that's out and now available. And we're also going to discuss some more things happening out here in the video game world and the video game music world. Let's get started. So Beanox, the creators of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, has put out their roadmap that they're making for the next couple months for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Uh, if you're a fan like I am, you will definitely be excited for what's to come. Uh, we see here that for the next month that's coming up, we're going to be in the Spooky Grand Prix. Spooky. Uh, interesting. So we're going to uh, see the Skull Rider vehicle out on probably the pit stop or in the Grand Prix. And we're also going to see Nina Cortex. Um, I'm not going to lie. I have no clue who that is. Like, I am a pretty big fan of Crash just in general. Like, my first ever video game was a set of games for PlayStation 1 in like 95 and Crash Bandicoot was one of them. It's not like she's been around the first three series, so. So apparently from the information I'm seeing here on Nina, she was supposed to appear in Crash Nitro Kart, and if she did, I would have known who she is. But Vicarious Vision, for some reason or another, decided to not put her in the game. So that's probably why I haven't seen her. Um, from other things that I've seen she's in, she's in Crash Bandicoot Purple, Ripto's Rage, which I never played, <laughs> and uh, she was in Crash Twin Sanity, which is another one I haven't played. We also see the Neon Circus Grand Prix, which I guess would be like, you know, your Thanksgiving type of theme, but it looks kind of more just like a festive clown. Uh, oh, well, it says Carnival. But yeah, a festive clown theme, obviously. I'm loving this car. The pressurizer seems dope. I'm really liking this car here. So I'm definitely probably going to see if I can pick this up in the pit stop or in the Grand Prix. So for me, I'm fresh out of ideas for these, these last two people. But I'm definitely interested in seeing who they are and where they come from and where they fit in the Crash series. The last one that we see for at least the roadmap until probably the end of the year is the Winter Festival. This one I'm interested in as well. All three of these I'm pretty interested in, but we definitely see a cool one here for Gingerbread Joyride. Um, we see the Nitro Sleigh, which I think is kind of dope. It's okay, but it's not my favorite out of these three. I definitely think the Pressurizer kind of is my favorite. Then the Skull Rider, it's a hard choice between those two. I mean, I'm not saying it's terrible, but I'm definitely interested in how it drives. Now looking at the fact that it has no wheels, so... Um, and then I'm definitely curious as to seeing who this is. It looks like some sort of Santa... El I mean, Santa, like, reindeer mix here. So it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to see here. I think seeing the roadmap for CTR Nitro Fueled at least shown out this simplistic um, shows at least that they still do have a vision for the game that people are still interested i still do think that there was a pretty big fall off from the initial start but i mean that usually tends to happen with live services you can't really assume that it's going to keep going on but i do think that these new grand prix are very tantalizing and will definitely keep more engagement so that the company can keep pushing out more grand prix and keep pushing out more content. And on to the next thing that we're going to talk about here, which is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Apparently the developer of Pokemon Sword and Shield has been saying that the cut Pokemon who are not going to be returning in this game are most likely going to be in future releases or in future games. Uh, he was basically saying that the reason that they decided to do this is so that it will allow the development team to free up time to be able to create more ideas for the game. And that actually does make a lot of sense. I mean, when you're thinking about 150 base Pokemon just for the original series, and then you're thinking of hundreds of more for different generations, it does take a while to create all of that content, make sure that everyone has different animations, different attack patterns. And yes, I do remember watching certain videos saying how much that they were able to cut back in the day for having 150 Pokemon and making sure that everyone was able to have their movesets and be able to have their unique identities. 
But at the same time, I do think that it is 2019 going to 2020. And, you know, people do want individualistic content. They don't want things that are always the same. So we don't want the same Pokemon having bite animations that probably are the same as someone else who would have bite animations. They were saying that they're going to have a couple extra features such as camping, cooking, trainer customization, things along those lines that will really kind of flesh out the game from it just being the normal uh, base Pokemon game, which by all means everyone wants. Everyone wants a base Pokemon game. It's been about that time, especially on the Switch, and so they definitely want that. It's just they just wanted to add some extra features. The one thing that I think is going to be very interesting that I did not know they're going to be doing is that they're going to be creating a Pokemon Home cloud service that will basically allow you to take all your old Pokemon and store them all in the cloud and it's going to launch for the Switch and mobile games. I'm not really sure how that's going to work together with every game, but it sounds like if they have this idea where you can or where they don't have every Pokemon character yet, or they don't have every character yet, and they're gonna put them in future releases, you can have the Pokemon that you have from this generation stored on the cloud, and then when you go to another game, you can transfer those Pokemon onto your other game. That's what I'm hoping happens, so therefore if other Pokemon are coming in like later at a different time or at a different game, you would go and pick up that game, and then you would be able to transport all your Pokemon that you had from one game over to the other. Next up, let's talk about Deltarune, the prequel, sequel, side equal, or just some other story that's kind of similar to Undertale. An awesome RPG that I would recommend everyone taking a look at if they have not heard of it or, or just thinking I'm crazy. Just take a look at this game. This game is absolutely amazing. So what we have here is Deltarune in a vinyl to be able to purchase for $25. This is an absolute amazing steal. If you enjoyed the music from Deltarune, you're definitely going to enjoy this. This basically has two sides to it, side A and B. It comes with stickers. It comes with a full cover that you can see here. It's just absolutely amazing. Of course, it supports Toby Fox. It's by Toby Fox, the creator of Delta Rune and of Undertale, and uh, I definitely would, uh, if you like the music, check it out. Next up, let's get into Grace Kelly and the 8-bit band that's going to be playing in Boston. I just wanted to pass this along to anyone who lives in Boston, that there's going to be a jazz orchestra playing famous 8-bit music like Mario, F-Zero GX, Sonic, Zelda, and it's going to be all happening in Boston on the 6th. So if you are in that area and enjoy video game music, especially 8-bit video game music played in jazz by an orchestra, then I'll leave links in the description below so you can be able to get tickets for yourself and be able to check out the event for yourself. Hopefully they'll post the video out on YouTube and at which point we can all take a watch and uh, I could send a link to everyone so that therefore we can all take a look at the awesome orchestra play. And that'll do it for this video segment. If you guys enjoy the video, you can leave a like, comment, and please subscribe. And if you guys didn't like the video, you can leave a comment on what can be done better. You can also reach me at our Discord, which I will leave a link in the description below. And thanks again for watching. Have a good one, you guys. Peace.